and welcome to this episode of DevOps Dialogue. My name is Paul Nashawati. I'm the practice lead of the app dev practice at the Futurum Group. Today I'm with Catchpoint and we're here to talk about IPM and internet uh, traffic and application availability and all sorts of goodness, right? So I'm here joined by Madi and Brandon. Madi, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you so much for having us. So my name is Madi. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Catchpoint. Uh, we started Catchpoint about 15 years ago. Prior to that, I was at uh, 11 years at this company called DoubleClick that was acquired by Google, doing all kinds of stuff from breaking the biggest ad-serving network system in the world to fixing it, and I guess I'm in hell for the rest of my life in monitoring. So, <laughs> okay, so well, thank you for being here. And Brandon? I'm Brandon DeLab, Senior Solutions Engineer at Catchpoint. Um, I've been at Catchpoint for over 10 years now, helping our clients and prospects um, find the value of Catchpoint and, and how we can ensure resilience for their, for their platforms. Excellent. Thanks for being here today. And you know, I, I, listening to your story and listening to everything that you're talking about in our briefings that we had conversations, it, it, it amazes me that uh, Catchpoint isn't front and center as a priority for organizations versus an afterthought to some organizations. Uh, why don't we start by, let's talk about what Catchpoint is. Sure. So uh, Catchpoint's uh, mission is to help customers run their businesses better through the internet, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to make it as simple, if when I tell my mom what I do, besides play with computers, is I make the internet better and I help companies we work with deliver on their promise to their users over the internet. And so that's what we do. How do we do it? Well, by providing telemetry and, and signals so they can know that there is a problem and they can fix it before too many users get impacted. Right. That's the gist in high level. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Do you want to add anything to that? Or? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the at the core of Catchpoint, um, we are a internet performance monitoring solution. It's it's a lot different than what um, your your typical monitoring solutions do and 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 provide for you. Um, and obviously, we can go a little deeper into that how it compares to APM. But at the core. Uh, it's an internet performance monitoring company ensuring internet resilience for any digital service that you may touch on your day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to add something here. So Brandon talked about internet resilience or resilience. So what, what is resilience? Resilience is the ability to know that you're going to have a problem and that you can recover from that problem. That's what resilience is, right? Being resilient is I am going to make an omelet and I'm, I'm going to eat my omelet, right? So how do we help? Well, by allowing you to see where you have weaknesses and where you have uh, problems, you can, when you know something, when you know where the problem is, then you can take corrective action. If you're completely blind to where there is a problem, like head in the sand, it's like, hey, everything is fine. And then you have people on Twitter saying, hey, I can't buy this thing, or hey, I can't check in here, or whatever. Uh, that's, that's really what internet resilience is, is the ability to understand that something will happen because inevitably it will. <laughs> exactly. And if you don't know where it's coming from, there is no way in hell you can fix it in time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I was, I was wondering if we we're going to change this into a cooking show talking about omelets, but that's <laughs> right, okay. Right. Uh, but you know, I, I think, make a mean omelet. Uh, I, well, that sounds you have good. To get the recipe. That sounds good. <laughs> so you know, when I think about uh, applications and I think about the internet, right? And we and we talked about how the internet is the new application infrastructure. Um, makes a lot of sense, but I don't think people really fully understand what that means. Um, when we talk about it from a catch points perspective, what does that mean? So the biggest thing is from an end user perspective, so you're sitting behind your laptop, you load apple.com or Microsoft or, or, or your favorite whatever website that need, might be. If you have a good Wi-Fi connectivity, if you have a good internet connectivity, et cetera, et cetera, that user experience is going to be flawless. The page is going to show up on your browser. You're going to be delighted, right? And you're going to have a good user experience with that brand. You're going to keep building that trust between you and that brand because they're respecting the most important thing that you have, which is time. That's one thing that doesn't grow anywhere. Right. Right? So I think brands need to respect the customer that they work with, that they're serving. So that's the most important thing. Behind the scenes, that loading of that web page took hundreds hundreds and hundreds of requests behind the scene to happen. Mm -hmm. There is a DNS lookup, there is a connection to a server, there is like fetching an image from here, there is fetching a JavaScript from here. 
and that JavaScript needs to be optimized so it doesn't blow up your computer, all that kind of stuff. So when we talk about, what we talk about is that can we help companies understand what it really takes to deliver that flawless, delightful user experience to Paul. 24 seven, not between two and four p.m., not at 6 a.m. when there is nobody online, but 24 mm seven. -hmm. And uh, so our job is really to, to shine that, 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 that uh, yeah, and be able to show them the path that is the, the most congested or the, the things that are breaking that user experience. But it's really about respecting the user. At the end of the day, if I have to, again, explain this to my mom, it's really about we help companies make sure they respect you, mom, as a, as a, as a human being. <laughs> yeah, I, I like where you're, where you're kind of going at. You know, you're respecting the people's time, for, especially, uh, you know, when it comes to looking for information and such. It's, it's critical that, they, they, that the response time is there. I, I think when we were talking earlier, Brandon, we were, I was hearing you talk about the fact that the new downtime is well, delay, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not about actual downtime. So yeah. it's not about things not actually loading because something's maybe broken in the back end, but it's delay and you lose, you lose clients. So what does that mean to the customer experience? Yeah, I think what that means, obviously it came with the, just the overall modernization of, of applications, right? Moving away from, okay, <laughs> I, I control the server, I control the code, you know, I, I control that data center to, I'm now leveraging someone else to do all that for me. And unfortunately, that means I no longer have the insight that I used to have. So when we talk about, you know, the internet being your new application infrastructure is, is essentially that. You have new cloud environments that you need to keep an eye on. You have multiple DNS providers, multiple CDN providers, and they're doing their monitoring on their own, right? But in today's world of, of you know, ensuring customers and, and our moms having a great experience, um, it's, in, it's important to do that monitoring on your own as well. Right. Just to follow up on, on that, uh, when we talk about slow is the new down, is because overall the past 15 years, 20 years, a lot of improvements have been made to ensure infrastructure resilience, right? The cloud didn't exist. Uh, data centers have become so much better there are so many things that have been done to, to ensure better reliability. But with the complexity explosion, with like uh, now moving to, as Brandon said, to third party cloud compute companies, et cetera, et cetera, now the new down is slow, is that slowness. Because before it was monolithic. You had, you had everything running in one building, it was fine. And today, if you go and load CNN or your favorite news website, you will see it's hundreds of requests going in so many directions. Sometimes we catch requests going to China from the US. Like, well, why is a US user going to China? Well, because there is a third party ad tracking company or something like that. And that can have an impact on it. Absolutely. So, you know, when I think about the DevOps community, right, and I think about a lot of the requests come in, especially on the weekends when things are slow <laughs> and maybe at two o'clock in the morning, right? Yep. Uh, that's, so that's not what uh, people want, right? Um, when they think about the tool sets, uh, a lot of what you've been talking about, um, on both of you have been talking about, is, is the monitoring solutions, right? And mm -hmm. looking at how the applications are being monitored, Correct. how they're running. There's also some confusion here in the market, I think, uh, from listening to different organizations around what um, you know, an APM is versus an IPM. Right. Um, maybe we should just spend sure. a couple of minutes yeah. talking about that. We going to give you an analogy that a customer gave me, true story. Um, and a customer in New York, so the analogy is based on New York. Um, he said, you know, with, with you guys, meaning uh, he was talking about Catchpoint is, uh, before Catchpoint, somebody would tell me there is a fire in Manhattan. Good luck. Mm -hmm. It's a big city. Right. With Catchpoint, I am told that there is a fire on 36 in Lexington on the third floor, door to the left. And oh, by the way, don't forget there are three cats. That's literally analogy from a customer. Very granular. <laughs> Very granular, yep. right? So I think, the, again, it's not one versus the other. I hate when people put things into sure. black or white. This is about... Uh, you need APM because APM gives you all the capabilities and all the infrastructure level monitoring, all the, all the depth that you need to understand the relationship between code to CPU, CPU to whatever, right? And so that is still a requirement. 
we try to understand a different part of the equation, which is why are things not working besides outside of your firewall, right? right? And outside of the things that you have a lot of control over. Because there is no way in hell, if let's say that you're running a, a, a website, there is no way in hell you can knock at somebody else's vendor and say, hey, can you put my APM agent? <laughs> They're not going to let you do that. So right. how are you going to be, have a view on things that you can't control? And nobody's going to let you run some vendor agent so you can have a better visibility. Sure, sure. So <clears throat> what you're touching on, though, is like this holistic view of the application, understanding right. down to the device, down to the specifics, uh, having full logging and tracing that kind of goes through and, and understanding. Um, but I use those words, logging and tracing, right? And one of the things I want to kind of bring up here, and maybe we can address it is real quick, is the difference between where a catch point fits within the observability space, because observability is a big market, right? right? And it's, it's a lot of different pieces. Right. Um, what, does it, what does it mean for, from that perspective? Yeah, I think where we um, fit in is obviously, as Mehdi already alluded to, it's, it's a complementary solution, complementary set of tools. And again, focusing on the customer first. Um, and when it comes to overall observability, that's obviously a shift that a lot of companies are making now in understanding that, yes, the customer, if, if the customer is not having a great experience, it's directly tied to our bottom line, our revenue, and potentially our, our own paychecks at the end of the day, right? So, so I think in the overall pie of observability, IPM is required, and especially focusing from the outside in from that uh, customer perspective. That makes sense. I, had a, I had a meeting with a customer a few weeks ago in Atlanta, and they spent more than $20 million on observability and uh, with one particular vendor alone. Right. Okay? So it's a lot. It's a big, uh, big check. And the question he asked me is, like, why are you the first one to catch problems then? Mm -hmm. It's like, because you're not spending money the right way or the right direction. Um, so the... The most important thing, and I, I and forget, I'm wearing a, my catch point hat for a second. I know it's a little bit uh, hard. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I keep telling this to people, is you need to monitor from where it matters the most. Mm -hmm. Your users are not living inside your app. <laughs> yeah. They're not. So you can monitor all you want inside the applications, <coughs> inside the infrastructure, et cetera. At the end of the day, the required, one of the most important thing is you need to understand the voice of the customer. If you don't have that, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You're just reactive. You're just waiting for... At that point, you know, my, my recommendation is actually shut down all monitoring systems. <laughs> shut everything down because you're wasting a lot of money. Just put something on your call centers and see if the phone, the phone is ringing up uh, to, <laughs> well, yeah. or smoke signals. Let's well, go back to that. It sounds like there's an opportunity to have a discussion around AI. And I know we're about yeah. 14 minutes into this conversation. Yeah. I had to bring up AI. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, as we're wrapping up here, uh, you know, I'm really uh, excited about this yeah. uh, opportunity. I'm really excited about the, 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 what, you know, what you're bringing to the table here. Uh, really, it has a lot to do with the market. And the mar market's matured, Correct. maturing. And where, uh, you know, wherever the audience is, on their maturity curve, right. and, they're, and they're, you can meet them where they are in their yeah, journey. Absolutely. Uh, but, but I encourage the audience to that thinking about this approach proactively versus right. reactively is important. Yeah. Right. Right. And with that, I do want to thank you for thank your, you. your time and your thank perspectives. You. This has been really great. And I want to thank the audience for attending. If, they, um, if the audience wants to get started, where would they get started? I would highly encourage people to go to our website. There you can view demos. You can also interact with our blogs. We have some amazing content. Uh, but uh, on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, X. Uh, but I think our blog is, is fantastic. There's uh, some amazing content that can get you started in your journey. And that you said it very nicely. It's a maturity. Like We start with availability. Then suddenly people start thinking about performance and then reliability, which is the ability to consistently deliver on both availability and performance. So. Excellent, excellent. A lot to unpack here. Well, mm. thank you for your time and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.